the world of Pokemon is continuously expanding. And we get to see that expansion in action with every new game that gets released. Pretty much every Pokemon game contains its own universe, with certain games even canonically containing a totally alternate universe or timeline from others. For the very first time though, we get to see the Pokemon world expand within a single snapshot of the Pokemon universe. The Galar region has gotten a little bit bigger with the Sword and Shield expansion pass. My name's Matt, but you can call me Absol. Earlier this year I made a movie about my first time playing through Pokemon Sword, and now this is a movie about the first part of the expansion pass, the Isle of Armor, and seeing what all it has to offer. I'll be doing a lot more than just playing through the story, so sit back, boot up your own copy of Pokemon or something, and I hope you enjoy. Our journey on the Isle kicked off in a unique way on June 17th, 2020, with a Pokemon Presents promising some new Pokemon news. I wanted to record my reaction to this, but less than a minute into the whole thing starting, my electricity went out. So I had to watch most of it on my phone. I was definitely most excited for the new Pokemon Snap, and I thought Pokemon Smile was a pretty funny novelty as well. They touched on a few other things in the presentation, like the official release of Shiny Zerora through a raid event, the unfortunate news that belligerent ducks with giant leaks had taken over the real world, and an announcement of an announcement. What we didn't get was much information on the Isle of Armor at all. I didn't even know what time the update would drop, but thankfully at the end of the presentation, my power came back on and I found my answer. My switch was already updating. And I was ready to begin my island getaway. So upon booting up the game, I was immediately greeted with a screen talking about the Isle of Armor, and was given the Armor Pass. I had my original Sword playthrough squad with me, but I didn't book enough tickets to the Isle of Armor for all of them. My goal is to make a new team for my playthrough, so I'm just bringing my starter with me temporarily until I find that team. But in order to get to the Isle of Armor, there's an event that I have to do first. An event that's been available since January that I'm sure Nurse Joy is sick of telling me about. I had held off on doing this Galarian Slowpoke event because I had once considered maybe doing a level 100 gauntlet off of only that Galarian Slowpoke. But once I learned how terrible the experience yield was for it, I decided to totally abandon that. So I just caught it, moved along, and went to the Isle of Armor. I wasn't really sure what to expect when I first departed for the Isle of Armor, but before I even stepped foot there, I think I can already make the bold assumption that this is far better than any actual island vacation I could have taken in the middle of June this year. And I can say this without even having any personal experience with island vacations to back this up. In fact, I've never even been on an island before, unless you count this giant mass of land as an island, in which case I've never left this particular island to go to another island as an island getaway before. So why am I so confident in this? Well, I'm glad you asked. From what I understand about island getaways from my other experiences with virtual island getaways, they typically end up with you having to do community service. But on the Isle of Armor, the only inhabitants are members of a dojo. So you'd be doing community service for a dojo, which is kind of sick. The Pokemon I can find on the Isle of Armor also guarantee some value that a real island vacation may or may not have. There would be no point to me going on an island vacation if there weren't Pokemon that I could catch there that I can't catch anywhere else. In real life, that actually does leave a few options. Like, I could go to New Zealand for Relicanth, or Sri Lanka for Torkoal, or Cyprus for Tropius, or even the real-life Isle of Armor, the Isle of Man for a Mime Jr. But that's only one or two Pokémon at best. And those things will probably eventually be available for me and go anyway through a 5,000 kilometer egg that's available for five minutes as part of an event with a 1% hatching rate. No big deal. Meanwhile, the Isle of Armor has over 100 returning Pokemon that can't be found on the mainland of Galar, so... Definitely has real life beat there. I have to give real life island vacations props for one thing, though. Maybe, just maybe, the beaches of a real life island would be more worth it than a trip to the Isle of Armor. 
because you don't really get to feel a cool ocean breeze coming from the vent of a Nintendo Switch, or the actual splash of swimming in the ocean. But maybe the Isle of Armor still has that beat, since you can ride your bike on the water, and that's pretty sick too. And speaking of bikes, the Isle of Armor also has the Bike Lady, who can transform your plebeian Rotom bike into a super cool bike that may or may not confirm Pokemon Black and White remakes. I mean, I'm not even sure how I would get any real-life bike on an actual island to produce these kinds of particle effects. So, I'm at a loss here as to why I would even go on an island vacation in the first place anymore. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, and I'm already going off on a tangent before showing any actual gameplay. So let's do that instead. So I was immediately greeted by Clara, who I think is one of the funniest characters we've seen in the games in a while, and I had a short battle with her outside. I was actually a little bit worried about this battle going blindly in, because I had read a rumor somewhere that the Pokémon's levels scale to the level of your Pokémon, so I was expecting a big challenge. But it turns out it just uses the same sort of level scaling that the Wild Area uses, where if you've already beaten the game, they're around level 60, so it was still a pretty easy battle. But after that battle, I actually took Clara's advice of staying away from the dojo and just decided to explore for a while. It was stated that one of the Isle of Armor's main focuses is exploration, and I really felt that as I roamed around. Man, we're on the Isle of Armor! Okay, let's see what's all here. I was most excited to run around greeting the returning Pokémon that were previously unavailable in Sword and Shield. I was also on a mission to scout out Pokémon for my team for the playthrough and what Pokémon I was going to shiny hunt first. I learned what familiar faces were returning through so many different ways while exploring. Sometimes, I ran into them. Is that Baneary? Yeah, Baneary's here, and Klefki? Is that Jigglypuff? Yes, it's Jigglypuff. Sometimes they ran into me. What's that, like, splashing really fast? It's Jarpedo. Sometimes they were raid bosses. Emolga. Okay. Sometimes they were hinted at in items. Dubious Disc! That's for Porygon! That means Porygon's back! Sometimes they were not new returning Pokémon at all. Blipbug! You're not new! And sometimes they just called out to me. Did I just hear Tentacool? Tentacool, buddy. It's like a family reunion seeing some of these Pokémon all over again. It was a little bittersweet learning which Pokémon had returned, though, because it made me think about the Pokémon that did not return. Like Crab Brawler, which doesn't even get to live in its own cave. Or Absol, which I'll have to wait until the Crown Tundra to find. I was still having a great time, though. And to honor the memory of Crab Brawler, I found my first team member in its cave. And it's a pink Generation 1 Pokémon. A normal type that would eventually get an evolution in a later generation and that I have a long history with. Lickitung. It was my first shiny I ever caught. I'm liking these caves. Because I feel like the, the base game was kind of lacking in the cave department. Like, we had a couple and they were pretty cool. But, uh, didn't have anything in the wild area like this. There is so much out here. I mean, there's just so much ocean, that's what I mean. What's a Fletchinder out doing out in the middle of the ocean, man? You get lost? It wasn't very long until I found my first shiny hunting target. Yes, Sandy Gast! Let's go! I am 100% going to be hunting for one of these things. And during this little exploration session, I also found the next two members of my team. The second was Unovan Snom. And the third was an old bizarre favorite of mine. Dunsparce! And it's gone! But it's there. Dunsparce. In case you had any doubts that Scyther is flying type, Scyther is actually flying, and I'm about to die. And when I say die there, I was actually speaking in the language of the Diglett. I started the long quest for finding all the Alolan Diglett on the island, which as you'll see will eventually totally consume my life for a day. But that'll have to wait. For now I finished this morning exploration session by evolving my Lickitung into Lickaliki, and then I moved on to doing far less exciting things for a little while. Alright, I'm gonna unfortunately have to take a break from this to do some stuff from work for a while. But I've loved exploring this so far. I have no idea what my final team's gonna be looking like here, but... I'm already liking what I'm seeing. Although it was a work day, I had plenty of breaks throughout the day which I'd fully dedicated to Pokémon. 
I still felt like I was somehow making a difference in the world by doing this, since I was able to help control the local belligerent duck population. On another break, I played up to a point where I could hunt Sandy Gast on shield, so I could double hunt on stream later that evening. On this file, I had 8 badges, but had not yet cleared the Pokemon League, and I noticed that the levels were scaled a lot lower. I also went for a bike ride, on my regular, significantly less cool bike that can't produce any cool particle effects. I find myself looking along the side of the road for little hairs sticking up out of the ground. Never know where you might find a diglet. But really I found it hard to focus on work when there was so much Pokemon playing to be done. So I found a compromise. While I was pounding away at the keyboard, I did some Zero Aura raids for the event in hopes of unlocking that shiny Zero Aura for everyone. And then after work, I would stream my shiny Sandy Gast hunt. Then after work, the hunt began. Since this shiny was going to be part of my Isle of Armor playthrough team, I was not going to make any progress in the story until I got this shiny. And I was going to hunt it full odds too, because that's just the way I roll. On the first day of streaming, I got to a thousand encounters. Then after the stream, I did some more hunting while also doing some Zero Aura raids with friends. I also tested out cooking curry to try and make wild Pokemon come to my camp on the Isle of Armor. But it looks like it works in the same way as the wild area, where no wild Pokemon ever come because it's in some sort of multiplayer mode. If anyone figures out a way to make wild Pokemon appear in camp in the wild area or on the Isle, please let me know. I did also eventually find a shiny that night, but it wasn't Sandy Gast. Shine! That's sick looking! Shiny Zero Aura. This Shiny Zero Aura raid wasn't full odds or anything. About 1 in 8 5 star Zero Aura raids were the Shiny, and the Shiny was a much harder version of the regular 5 star raid. If, an emphasis on the if, you were able to defeat it, you weren't able to capture it anyway. I never even got to taste victory versus this thing, though. It demolished us. So I just hit 1400 encounters for Sandy Gast, and I found a shiny Zerora through the raids but wasn't able to beat it with my friends. Um, I'm about to turn in for the night and go to bed. But before I do, I still have another new Pokemon experience to experience that I've been looking forward to doing all day. It's time to smile. Who am I going to pick? Bulbasaur. This is crazy. What the heck is going on, dude? All right, I got my toothbrush. With my partner Bulbasaur at my side, I fought the forces of Tooth Evil, a battle that I've honestly been fighting all my life, but have never fought with a Bulbasaur by my side. I feel like I could have easily cheesed this game by not using a toothbrush at all, but that kind of defeats the purpose of what Pokemon Smile is in the first place, even though I'm definitely not in the target demographic. You have no idea how old I felt setting my birthday and seeing it start at 2015. When I had defeated the forces of evil, I was able to catch a Pidgey. Got a Pidgey. Pretty epic. Got a Pokemon cap. Let's go. A sticker. Oh gosh, pictures of my great brushing. What a great picture, man. Smile. Beautiful. So it looks like all the Kanto Pokemon are available. I wonder if Shinies are in this game. That's been quite the experience. I think it's time for me to go to bed though. Tomorrow I'm gonna resume some hunting after work. So let's go back to the aisle and then let's go back to the smile. That kind of rhymed. Well, that absolutely rhymed. Good night. This is me every single day before I brush my teeth now. June 18th, day two on the Isle of Armor. And yesterday on stream, I learned that you can find wild palisand in certain weather conditions. And that depends on what day it is. On my main switch, I don't wanna mess up my Animal Crossing town though, so I'm not doing any time traveling on that one. But luckily, on my second switch, I don't really play Animal Crossing. So I've got the date set to June 19th now, where it'll be overcast. Hold on, before I say the next thing, I have to boot up my game. And now, on the beach, we have wild palisand because of the weather. 
the evolved form of Sandy Ghast. It looks so insanely cool, and I can't wait to try and hunt this thing. It'd be so cool to see this thing shine on screen, so I'm gonna hunt it on this game, and when tomorrow actually rolls around, I'll be able to hunt it on both switches. Um, I still wouldn't mind getting Sandy Gas though before then, because I want to keep playing in the story. But just the possibility of this is insanely cool to me, so let's get into hunting. I put forth a valiant effort into the hunt, but effort doesn't matter in shiny hunting, because it's a matter of luck. I eventually got the 2600 encounters for the day on the stream. It's nighttime. I'm about to go to bed. I've done 2600 encounters for Palace Sand now, and tomorrow begins the weekend, or tomorrow night begins the weekend, where I'm gonna go all out hunting. But before I go to bed, got one more thing to do. Let's get brushing. Oh, Magmar! Sick. Got a Magmar. That's a pretty cool one to get this early on. Like, going from Pidgey to Magmar, pretty cool. Good night. June 19th, day three. Let's get that Palisand. So I did get to double hunt Palisand for a lot of the day like I wanted to, but I was still missing the crucial component of shiny hunting that you really need, luck. I've hit 4,320 encounters. Still no shiny sand, but that's okay. Because I still have Pokemon Smile. Psyduck. It's June 20th. Uh, Weedle Day in Pokemon Go, so I'm out on a Weedle walk right now. Plan on going back and hunting the Sandcastle and hopefully being able to finally start the Isle of Armor today. But if it's a long hunt and I still don't get it today, it is what it is. At least I'll walk away with some shiny Weedle at the end of it all. Oh wait, wrong app. I don't know if the middle of summer, right around the summer solstice, was a really good time for Weedle Community Day, because uh, we kind of got a lot of Weedle casualties right here. It's really unfortunate. I salute these fallen Weedle. And we'll avenge them somehow. I don't know how, but uh, avenge the fallen. I'm back from the Weedle walk and it's time to shiny hunt. Look for Palisand. So I streamed for Palisand again, and I was actually double hunting it again, because I had learned that if you time travel on your Switch and don't open Animal Crossing, the game won't know that you time travel. So I time traveled to make it so the weather was perfect for Palisand on both games, and I made sure not to touch Animal Crossing at all. I hit 5,000 encounters on stream. Then later that evening, I did some more hunting, and I was getting set up to maybe stream again, but uh... Unfortunately, I wasn't able to stream again that night because something happened. <laughs> Thank you. Shiny Palisand! Oh my gosh! Oh, that looks so cool. Right after I sneezed. 5,227 encounters. I was just about to start streaming again tonight. And I found the Shiny Palisand and it looks so cool. But now I have to catch it. Caught it. Nice. Shiny Palisand. I love the way it pops up like that. That's so cool. Oh man, I love this thing. Now it's time to get on with the Isle of Armor. With my newly caught Palisand, while I was out on the water, I found a 1% encounter that would become my fifth team member and the final capture before starting the story. And it wasn't Sharpedo. Go away, Sharpedo. I'm sorry, you're not it. It was Clawitzer. Which is admittedly a Pokemon I forget exists sometimes, but please don't tell it that. So I think I've finally decided on the team I'll be using in the Isle of Armor now. I've taken up the first five slots, and I'm saving the sixth slot for Kubfu whenever I get it. Since I've learned it's kind of essential that you use Kubfu. So, we've got Raspberry the Licky Licky. We've got Shrimp Popper, the Clawitzer. 
We've got Brick Road, the shiny palace sand, which we have spent the last few days hunting, of course. We have Frost Moth, the Frost Moth. And we have Pi, the Dunsparce. I had great expectations for these brave warriors, and I'm sure they also had great expectations for me. I wanted to live up to them, so I finally began the story and made my way to the dojo. There's Clara, or Clara, I don't know how to pronounce her name yet. I then successfully loosely became a student of this dojo and gained access to all of its benefits. I don't know too much about real life dojos, but if I were to join one, I'd assume I'd get the same benefits that I would get from joining this one, such as the EXP charm, which permanently boosts the experience that your Pokemon get by 50%, which might be helpful for future level 100 gauntlets. The back rooms, where you can heal your Pokemon, a sassy rival who refuses to help you in any way whatsoever, but you'll always help at the drop of a hat. Pictures of Clay Doll. Pokemon Quest for the Nintendo Switch. A guy named Mustard. A lot of shiny. Trophies. And the Cramomatic. A magnificent device that captured my attention so much that it still remains my lead card background to this day. This thing's pretty crazy and has a lot of depth to it. You put four items into the Cramomatic, and another item comes out. And there are some specific recipes to get special items. With apricorns, things get really crazy, where if you put in four apricorns, you have a 1 in 1,000 chance of getting either a safari ball or a park ball. And I'm still grinding to try and get one of those to this day. I had some good fun experimenting with this thing at first, not knowing what would happen. All right, I don't, I don't plan on hunting uh, one of the bird fossils, so I'm gonna just put in four fossils and see what happens. Cell battery. Fossil fuels. Let's do that again. I wonder if it consistently like produces that, because that's pretty funny if it does. It does. Fossil fuels. About four rare candies. Ability capsule, that's awesome. These benefits of the dojo were nice, but I still wasn't considered an official member yet, so I needed to fight mustard to gain that official membership and unlock even more benefits. Most of my team here was fresh from the wild, but the battle was still not very difficult at all. And I imagine that these early fights in the Isle of Armor are set up this way since you can access it from very early on in the game on a new save file. And they wanted to try and balance it to make it so it's possible for that. Which is understandable, but I kind of wish there was a little bit more of a post-game challenge in here. After defeating Mustard, I got what I really wanted from this island vacation so much in the first place. Some dojo community service, disguised as three trials. The first bit of community service was to retrieve Clara's dojo uniform that got stolen by some fast slowpoke. Those things are booking it! The goal was to see who could retrieve the uniform first, and it was a mad dash between all the members of the dojo to do so. Except for me. I had just gotten a dojo uniform myself as well, but it was kind of cramping my style, so I decided to change out of it when everyone left. All these people booking it to do the trial, and I'm just going to change out of the dojo uniform. And while I was at it, I also decided to spend some quality time with Pokemon Quest. Now I'm not sure if I'm remembering this correctly, but I remember some press conference last year, they announced that there was a special version of this game coming to China. With PvP and a bunch of added features. And I'm pretty sure we've heard nothing on that in the past year. I still wonder if they're even working on it at this point, point. I kinda hope they are, cause I really enjoyed this game. It's such a good little passive time killer, and there's shiny hunting in it, so... It's automatically something that I'm interested in for that reason alone. I can only hope that maybe one day we get another generation of Pokemon added to the game or something. This game has a bunch of charm to it. But I guess I should get back to chasing those fast slowpoke. There they go.
has unique battle music. I wish all the wild battles had this music here, that'd be sick. I will let this one run into me. Or I will not. I'm ready. I made quick work of the three fast slowpoke, and I retrieved the uniform. <laughs> she looks so disgusted about this. I had cleared the first trial, and as a reward I got a Kanto starter, which I didn't save a slot for on my team. I still had to decide which one to pick though. The Squirtle smiled at me, I have to pick it. I feel like the Bulbasaur would have smiled too if I walked close enough to it, but I gotta go with the Squirtle. It's only right, because I gave Bulbasaur its chance in Pokemon Smile. So I'll give Squirtle the attention in this game. Then began the next part of community service, harvesting some max mushrooms for some soup. And with this second trial, we also unlocked a new move tutor in the dojo. New moves, entirely. Terrain Pulse? Burning Jealousy, I like that name. This is so fitting for my Palisand. I gotta teach it Scorching Sands. It's a little bit less strong than Earth Power, but it's worth it. It's a new move. I then found the mushrooms, but goofed off in camp for a little bit. Alright, I'm curious to see if this EXP charm affects curry. So let's make some curry real quick. Just like old times. Man, I feel like I've done this thousands of times for some reason. Chars aren't class. Look at Dunsparce just floating there. It's so high up. <laughs> that might actually be a little bit more than we were getting earlier. Let me do a Kaparaja class to check. Now that's the same amount of EXP. So the EXP charm doesn't appear to affect curry. After conducting my curry experiment in the middle of this race to find the mushrooms against the other members of the dojo, I finally decided to win the race and collect the mushrooms. As soon as I tried to get the mushrooms though, Clara showed up and tried to persuade me to let her take them instead. I wasn't going to let her pressure me though. Thanks to a wise plankton from an episode of Spongebob, I knew how to be assertive. I had to stand up for myself and then let them have it. Sure, you can have them. It's clear that plankton's assertion tactic worked correctly, as she backed down from verbal persuasion and decided to battle me over the mushrooms instead. Just like the previous mustard battle, this fight was designed to be possible for anyone, including people who are in the very early game, so there wasn't all that much to it. I was really excited to check out Palisand's brand new move animation for the first time though. That move looks cool. After I finished off this battle with Clara, I was able to collect the mushrooms and complete the trial. I didn't expect them to disappear like that. Then when I got back to the dojo, I was able to immediately see the results of my dojo community service in action, enjoying a nice big hot pot of max soup. Whoa, what? I can become Dynamax? Oh. While I couldn't use it on myself, I could use it on my own Pokémon to make them capable of Gigantamaxing. With this... I can at last... say... that I have all the Alchemy forms. Since now, I can have the Gigantamax Shiny Alchemy. Then after that, I was ready to take on the final, last, ultimate, third trial which might not even be considered dojo community service. And this final, last, ultimate third trial is a not final, not last, not ultimate third battle with Clara. She's really pushing that Pokeball's button. 
Clara tried to cheat in this battle by putting down two layers of toxic spikes, and it might have actually done a number to me if her team actually packed some punch. Believe it or not, each member of her team only has two or three moves. Again, probably because it was balanced to be more realistic with the lower levels that you do this battle at if you were doing it early in the game. This battle also took place on a special battlefield out behind the dojo where you can actually Dynamax your Pokémon. And I think it looks really cool out here because we don't normally get to see Pokémon Dynamax out in the open in the outdoors in the main story. That being said, I unfortunately didn't get to fully utilize my Dynamax Palisand out here because I thought her Galarian Weezing would have the neutralizing gas ability but instead had Levitate causing me to waste a Ground-type move on it and faint. After defeating Clara, I had cleared all three trials, meaning that it was time for me to receive the secret armor of the dojo. This wouldn't be the end of the dojo community service, though. The secret armor. Cut. I love his face. And that's that. I'm gonna name a dishwasher for no reason. My next goal was to show Cub Fu around and show it some cool sights to get closer to it. I also unlocked another really cool feature. Oh, the stroll feature. Yo ho! It's so slow, but it's so sick. Actually, having like an overworld shiny palace sand because it's following me. Maybe I need something else to follow me because this thing's so slow. Take your time, buddy. I can only imagine what it's like to have like a snom following you. Let's train. Mustard suggested Pokemon camp for this, so let's do some camping. Go get the Leon. This thing makes some loud noises. I guess you don't want to get the Leon. What are you doing out there all by yourself? Just standing there? Whoa, whatever Pokemon I have at the lead eats a lot. Kubfu? Big eater. Alright, I'm getting pretty tired and I think it's time for me to go to bed. And I'll resume this in the morning. In the meantime, Palisan will slowly approach me and maybe by the time I wake up it'll be right there next to me. Whoa, hey there, Palisand. You actually caught up pretty quick there, buddy. So, uh... Yeah, I brought my Switch with me to bed for the night. I decided I still could get a little bit of Pokemon in before I go to sleep, even though I'm really tired. In fact, I'm so tired that I forgot to play Pokemon Smile while I was brushing my teeth, so 
what was even the point in doing that crap. But, um, I decided I'm gonna go to bed doing some raids, because I want to get some more Armorite ore so I can teach my Pokemon some more cool moves like that, uh, Scorching Sands. Just because I think they look cool. So, uh, let's do some raids before I go to bed. Is that Kyogre, the CEO of water, in my raid? There's a dojo girl with a Crocorock now. I am welcome to new raid NPCs because of how useless some of the old ones are. Unless these new ones are also useless. Not sure if this is a glitch in the system or the work of some hackers. Good job taking down the egg, guys. I've racked up a very decent amount of Armorite ore, so I think I'm done for the night now. Just put my Nintendo Switch system in sleep mode. Now it's time to put myself in sleep mode. It's June 21st. My Pokemon have some brand new moves now, and I've got a Baja Blast. Let's adventure some more. I took on the task of taking Dishwasher to go see some very scenic sights, handpicked by Mustard. So I did a little bit of sightseeing. Because we mastered the art of sightseeing together, Mustard thought Cubfu and I were finally ready to take on one of the Towers of Two Fists. We had a choice to make. Tower of Waters or the Tower of Darkness? I had to decide in a cool, calculated, and intelligent way. So for my Kung Fu, I have two choices. I have water, or I have darkness. Oh, look at that. We still see the water. I'm going with water. Here's the water tower. Looks kind of different from most water towers that I've seen, but uh, still pretty cool. I was surprised to see that Cub Fu's the only Pokemon allowed in here, and I was shocked at the suggested level they wanted you to have it at too. Level 70? Okay. I guess we gotta train this thing to level 70 now. Now I could have raised this thing to level 70 in less than 5 seconds using just some experience candies I had lying around, but there's no fun in that, whatsoever. So I decided to grind off of some of the local wildlife, with just Kubfu by itself. There's one. Right there. Level 70. The pinnacle of suggested levels for a Kubfu. Pretty much every Kubfu reaches this level. This is a video in which I push Kubfu to this level in a pretty conventional way and environment, because more or less, experience candies are really boring. This is the Level 70 Gauntlet. I hope you enjoy. So yeah, I decided to just train up Kubfu off a of wild Pokemon, and it actually ended up working out pretty well thanks to Chansey. Let's go Kubfu! Knocked out a Chansey all by itself. Level 23. Brick break. Going from breaking rocks to breaking bricks. Love to see it. So strong. I feel like they put in these chances specifically for people to train up Kung Fu like this. Because it works so well. We're really sneaking up on these chances, they won't even know what hit them. But we know what's hitting them, it's Cub Fu. Doing some level grinding. Watching some Safari Week vids. Thanks to how much EXP Chansey gives, this turned out to be a delightfully fast gauntlet that wasn't painful at all. I recommend it. Alright Cub Fu, for the next part of training we'll be abandoning you on the shore right here, so good luck buddy. I'm gonna go on a bike ride. 
There was one thing we encountered along the way that kind of spooked me, though. How can you use high horsepower? You're a cow! It's alright we go down to this mill tank because it defies all logic in the first place. I'm convinced that this thing using high horsepower despite being a cow is even more of an apparition than my palisand itself. So I need to banish it to the psychic realm once and for all. Definitely not coming back to this area for a little bit. That spooked me. If you want to become strong, you have to learn how to fight yourself. Within maybe an hour or so, we reached our goal. Level 70. Now we can take on the tower. Let's find the tower. This place is cool. This reminds me of Johto. We get an announcement on Wednesday. Maybe it has to do with Johto. To reach the top of the tower, I needed to defeat these dojo students in battle with Cub Fu. And that wasn't a problem for us at all. They were all pushovers compared to the freak of nature that was the high horsepower mill tank. I mean, none of them even came close. That thing's not a horse, man. This has been a pretty easy trial so far. Well, let's see what happens with Mustard here. The hat is off. He's got an Ultra Ball. Mustard colored. Oh, he's got his own Cub Fu. By fighting a wild Ditto earlier, I had already unknowingly prepared myself for this fight. This was a battle of fists and decision making. And because I am a human, and he is controlled by a computer, I won this time. Got him. That was like Pokemon Let's Go Cub Fu right there. And now, I was able to evolve Cub Fu, who might be the first Pokemon to evolve by scroll. Let's go, Dishwasher. Urshifu. Look at that idle animation, that's so cool. When I came down from the tower, I went back to the dojo and began the portion of the DLC that's only available if your main file's in the post-game, Adventuring with Hop. They definitely amped up the challenge for this part, with many challenging things, like first making you challenge the way you originally imagined that Petalil walked, and then having you escort a Lilligan around that just doesn't seem to want to follow you. How'd I lose that thing? Oh no. My favorite challenge, though, was what happens when your character is somehow is able to shake this giant tree with Herculean strength. I now understand why HM04 was no longer needed in this game. Whoa! -ho. It's a Gigantamax tree. The Vespaquin Raid Battle. This is a max raid that is set up in a totally different format, where you battle it solo with your own team like a regular Pokemon battle, with no turn limit restrictions. Going through this battle just felt so cool, and reminded me of the Ultra Necrozma fight from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. It really made me wish that I could take on any max raid battle this way as an option. I can only hope that maybe this was included as a teaser for what we might see with some of the legendary raids in the Crown Tundra, since that DLC seems to have a focus on stuff like that. But I have no way of guessing what's really in store for us there at the moment. I was just shocked to see how this battle worked, and definitely would have made some different decisions had I known how it would work going into it, but I still managed to clutch it out in the end. I just want to say that it was a very, very fun struggle, and I definitely prefer it to the way raids work now.
Let's go, using Reversal. That was actually really tricky for my level 70 team. I want to have the option to do normal raid battles like that. Like, instead of calling upon other people, I want to be able to take it on with the whole team like that. That would be so sick. I'd love that, actually. In retrieving that max honey from the Vespaquin, Hop and I had finished our last bit of dojo community service, and I could now make my Urshifu Gigantamax. And then, we had one final battle in the story. A battle versus a former Galar Pokemon League champion, Mustard. You know how earlier I was talking about how every battle felt kind of bland and easy? Well, thankfully this battle wasn't, because this battle was made for the post-game. And his Pokémon were a few levels above mine, making it a little bit of an extra challenge for me. I just love the feeling of going into a battle like this for the very first time, especially a battle that kind of feels like a champion battle like this, because I only get to experience that maybe once a year with every new game that comes out, at least experiencing it for the first time, without knowing what the opponent has up their sleeves. And Mustard definitely had quite a few surprises up his sleeves. He had a pretty cool and diverse team of powerful Pokémon, with a very interesting move pool, constantly keeping me on my toes about what Pokémon I had sent out. I definitely ended up using some kind of weird strategies for this battle, like letting my Dunsparce continuously body slam the Steel-type Corviknight, knowing it wasn't very effective, just in hopes of maybe getting a Paralyze off of it, so I could outspeed it with another Pokémon. I think I was also kind of stubborn because I had set up Coil twice on it and I really just wanted to see how much a Body Slam would do, so I healed it just so I could Body Slam the Corviknight with a Coiled Dunsparce. It turns out it really doesn't do all that much damage, but that's kind of expected from Dunsparce. As much as I love the thing, it's kind of weak. But I'm gonna be quiet for a minute so you can just kind of jam out to this music for a second. Pokemon that I slept on the most on his team was kamo -O. That thing was terrifying. It not only had some powerful moves, but it also had Clangorous Soul, the setup for some even more powerful moves. It's really interesting to me how many, like, signature moves this thing has. They really showed this thing a lot of love last generation and this generation. In order to prevent a total sweep, I decided to Gigantamax my Urshifu when I sent it out. And that thing looks freaking sick. Mustard also Gigantamaxed his Urshifu, and that thing also looked freaking sick. Here comes the signature move. I'm about to get destroyed. One blow? Is it really called one blow? <laughs> yeah, that's, that took me down in one blow. We got it! <laughs> that was an intense battle. Mostly because I was underleveled. That was cool though. That's the end. I think. There's probably more. And today, I have beaten the Isle of Armor. Or so I thought. 
because the real challenges of the Isle of Armor were yet to begin. So even though I've seen the the end screen on the Isle of Armor, that's not really the end of it all, because there's still a whole lot that I need to do. I need to find all the Diglett on the island, and then I need to complete the Isle of Armor Pokedex, because I looked into the Pokedex rewards and it's actually something that I really want to get. So I guess I'll dedicate the rest of the movie to that. And there might be some more stuff that they might have added on for me to do on the Isle that I don't really know about yet, so I'll do that too. So once I finish eating this apple, and let's look for those Diglett. Before beginning the Great Diglett Hunt, I got a free Porygon. Yeah, I like it. And a really epic shirt. <laughs> Clara forever? Sorry, bald guy, I gotta represent. And then the search for the 151 Alolan Diglett began, and I refused to use any guides. I found 11 so far, and I need to find 140. The Daytona 500. Looks like the crops had another good season this year. DDD! Oh my gosh! Hold on. This is my favorite Diglett in the Isle of Armor. This Diglett probably has like one of the best views on the whole Isle of Armor. Diglett, yeah! Diglett, yeah! Okay, I'm sorry for that. Piers? You're not a Diglett! Another DDD. Let's go. The rain may fall. The water may separate us. But I'll never forget you, Licka Licky. It's for the best, though. Goodbye. Two of them. Two more twins. Oh, you find both of them at once, too. And a Doug Trio! What? What's up? So I was thinking I'd just be spending the beginning of my evening doing this Diglett mission. But, uh... I'm three hours deep right now, and it's dark outside, and... If I'm not careful, I might accidentally stay up all night doing this. Alright, I'm done for the night. I'll come back at this tomorrow. 127 more Diglett came back. 138 with 13 left. I started the next day with a smash announcement before work. June 22nd? It is arms time. I have no idea what to expect. I just hope my power doesn't go out like it did during the last Pokemon Presents. Recording equipment. <laughs> he likes to have two screens? Well, I also like to have two screens. Is it Min Min? Min Min. Interesting. That was nice. Min Min. Later in the evening, I went back to looking for the remainder of the Diglett. DDD. One area remains for finding Diglett. The Forest of Focus. I totally lost focus here, though, because I wanted to experiment with something. I'm gonna try something interesting. I'm kind of curious. Do the Diglets say the same thing every time? Da? D? They do say different things. What the heck? This is news to me. I'm gonna soft reset for a DDD. And the inner shiny hunter in me awakened as I began to soft reset the Diglet until they said DDD. DDD! Let's go! That took a few soft resets, but it worked. Oh, there's the final one! The last Diglett. Ta-da! 
And as a reward for rounding them all up, we got a bunch of Alolan Pokemon as gifts, including our own Alolan Diglett. It is an absolutely perfect Diglett, a perfect specimen. So now we found every single Diglett on the Isle of Armor. So what remains for us to do? Well, that's easy. Just like how we used the sink in my bathroom to determine which Urshifu we're getting, we're using the towel in my bathroom to determine the next goal. We gotta catch them all. So, as it stands, I've caught 83 Pokemon in the Isle of Armor Pokedex and I've seen 156. And that's all fine and dandy, but I wanted to see if I can make a living dex out of the entire Isle of Armor dex found on the Isle of Armor, preferably. So that means I'm gonna be re-catching a lot of these Pokemon, even if I already caught them on my original Sword playthrough. So let's get into that. So I stopped scrolling through the Pokedex aimlessly. So when I was filming this, I couldn't find any great checklists online for making a living Isle of Armor Dex. So I decided to make my own. And I went the analog way. Or as I accidentally say while narrating for this video. So I decided to go acoustic. So for a second I thought I forgot to account for Rotom because I didn't remember writing down all of its forms. But I just learned in the process of this that despite being available on the Isle of Armor, Rotom is not in the Isle of Armor Pokedex. I really wonder if this was an oversight or intentional. All right, I got my checklist at the ready, pen ready to go. Got my Pro Controller all charged up. Got my character in the Isle of Armor. Let's get some captures going. The vast majority of the Pokemon are available in the wild, so I had a lot of capturing to do. I had a pretty productive night of capturing, and even captured the big Waylord out in the ocean. I also noticed an interesting little bike glitch. I'm pretty sure I wasn't on my bike there. I think I might have just glitched into the water. That's cool. Alright, it's midnight now. Put down a pretty good number of check marks. Literally all I've done is capturing so far, so I haven't done any training or breeding or anything. Gonna keep going tomorrow since the weather's gonna change and there are gonna be some different strong spawns. Let's polish off this armor decks. June 23rd, I wanna keep working on my decks, but also I got the sudden urge to play clarinet for the first time in years. So I'm gonna do that for a little bit first. <laughs> I kind of forgot how it feels for my mouth to hurt from playing clarinet for a while, but it's a good feeling. I feel out of practice on it, I want to get back into practice. And right now, I'm going to get right back into the practice of catching them all. With every passing day, the weather changes on the aisle, which means different strong spawns appear. I captured some of the new strong spawns I could access, but it wasn't very long until I was running out of things to catch on sword. Without doing any evolutions or breeding, I have a pretty good collection going right here on Sword. And I think it's about time that I start up Shield so I can get some of the version exclusives. So let's do that. Swapping out switches as if I was swapping out old Nintendo cartridges, I started up Shield. Playing through the Isle of Armor on Shield was insanely fast. All the Pokemon's levels were scaled super down, I already knew how to do all the Dojo community service, and I got some version exclusives along the way. Of course, I also got another Cubfu in order to get another form of Urshifu. On Sword, I trained my Cubfu off the Chansey in the Wild. 
on shield, I'm going to train in a more intense way. I will take experience candy large and apply it. I didn't mean to raise it to that high of a level, but okay. The extent of leveling I did where I raised it to level 70 on sword wasn't even necessary on shield because Mustard's Cub Fu was only level 30 at the top of the tower. So tonight my dex has been coming along pretty well in both versions of the game. And now I just need to have certain weather conditions in order to complete the dex. So I'm going to do some time traveling to get the strong spawns to appear. Now, let's call upon Celebi, see what tomorrow brings. Let's get the rest of these Pokemon. So, by the end of the night, I've actually polished off the vast majority of this dex now just by capturing. Uh, I can probably polish off the rest of this tomorrow. But for now, I think it's important that I go to bed because I got work in the morning. And more importantly, there is a Pokemon Presents in the morning where we're supposedly getting some pretty big news. So good night. Unfortunately, this big news would not align with my interests. What is this? Looks like a mobile type game. What the heck? Is it a MOBA? I am not interested when it comes to MOBAs, man. Even if it's Pokemon. Let's go back to the Isle of Armor. It was a very rainy day outside, which meant it was perfect for just sitting inside and capturing the rest of the Pokemon I needed. With that Scolipede, I have captured everything that appears in the wild on the Isle of Armor, with the exception of things that are exclusive to raids. So now at this point, I just have some breeding and evolving to do. So let's get to that. Getting these evolutions barely took any time at all, because so many Pokemon were already available in the wild before this. In fact, many of these evolutions are available in the wild in other parts of Sword and Shield but I wanted to use Pokemon that were caught on the Isle of Armor exclusively for this. I also had some hatching to do, so I decided to hatch them in the Tower of Waters so they could have a cool hatch location. I also decided that I wanted every single form in the Isle of Armor decks, including regional variants, and that meant that I also needed to get the one Pokemon form that's exclusive to raids on the Isle of Armor, Dusk Lycanroc. So I threw wishing pieces into this raid den on Challenge Road until I either saw that Dusk Lycan Rock or a Rock Ruff raid pop up, since the Rock Ruff in these raids are capable of having own tempo and evolving into this special Dusk form. It took a few Rock Ruff raids until I finally found and caught this thing, and I caught it after Dusk, so I would have to wait till the next day in order to evolve it. Now, we've got some trade evolutions to do. Thankfully, I have two switches. Now, at this point, I basically have the full Isle of Armor decks here. Minus a second Cub Fu for the living deck's sake, and a Dusk Lycan Rock, but I just need to evolve that tomorrow whenever it's the right time for that. No biggie. But, since I transferred in a good number of these Pokemon from Pokemon Home, the Isle of Armor Dex is still not actually complete. Luckily, there's a little workaround we can do. It'll take a little bit of elbow grease, but it's a whole lot less elbow grease than having to catch these things all over again. The goal is to go to the Pokemon Nursery. Now, for every single Pokemon that I don't have the Dex entry for, I'm going to leave it in the daycare or the nursery, then take them back out. And there we go, we get it in the Pokedex. Very strange workaround. I don't know why it doesn't work in the first place. Maybe this is a bug, maybe it'll be fixed. Maybe it was something to encourage more captures in the Isle of Armor. I don't know, I did all this capturing on the Isle of Armor, so I don't mind, it. I don't mind doing this if it's a workaround. But yeah, we're basically gonna rinse and repeat doing this 
until we have a full Isle of Armor decks. And we're going to be spending a lot of Poke Dollars in the process. This is absolutely riveting gameplay. And check it out. We have a complete Isle of Armor Pokedex. And I still haven't caught a Rookity. Not a single one. But for now, let's go get our reward. I did it, finally. In a span of a week. Triumphant fanfare, and look at that certificate. Beautiful. Replica gold crown. We're gonna be a king. The mark charm, which is the main reason why I was doing this. Increases the chance of finding Pokemon with marks. Definitely worth having, especially for how much I'd love to do random encounter hunts in the grass. You dropped this, king. Man. I am ready for the Crown Tundra now. I'm fully prepared. That's all I gotta do on this file until dusk tomorrow when I need to evolve that Rock Ruff into Lycanroc. But now we gotta go get another Cubfu real quick. So, let's save our progress and let's get our last Cubfu. You may have once known me as Absol Blog's Pokemon, or maybe Matt. Or maybe Absol. Or maybe Umbrella. But ever since finishing the Isle of Armor DLC, I am now a king. Because, you know, I got a crown and all. Sometimes things change. Just a king now. But some things never change. In order to get this last Cub Fu, I'm going to play through the DLC the old fashioned way. I'm going to play it in handheld mode, and I'm probably not going to play it with this puppet hand because it would be really hard to control. So, uh, bye DDD. Let's go through this on another Switch profile. And thankfully, even though none of these Switch profiles here are Nintendo Switch Online except for my main one, it looks like I can still access the DLC and get the armor pass on any profile. So, that'll be really handy. This is going to be a pretty quick and easy one too since this file hasn't finished the Elite Four either. So everything's gonna be really low leveled. So let's get that last Cub Fu real quick. Then tomorrow we'll evolve Rock Ruff into Lycan Rock and we'll be done with it. I will be back. Back from my walk and I had a pretty good mail haul. First off, I got a second Pokeball Plus because they went on sale online. And my first one isn't in the best condition anymore because I've used it so much, walked around with it a ton. So I figured it'd be good to have a second one as backup just in case. And I think Mew from the Mystery Gift is hardware locked to each individual Pokeball Plus. So I uh, got another one in case I ever need another Mew. Got some really sick Uniqlo Evangelion shirts that just went on sale to celebrate the new movie that's still probably never coming out and I don't actually believe it ever will. And I got another shirt that isn't actually from uh, Uniqlo, as you can probably tell. Long story. Actually, I don't even know if there is a story, I just ordered it. But the first trial is clear and I will pledge allegiance to Bulbasaur. Sorry, Squirtle. The next day, the final day, I moved my living decks into Pokemon Home to fulfill the purpose of that living dex in the first place. To have easy access to a mark charm on any file of sword or shield that I ever make. I would have to do the daycare maneuver in order to fully register the Pokedex every time I do this, but that doesn't take terribly long. In fact, I timed how long it took on my other sword file.
Right now it's 7.30. Not the most impressive dusk outside right now, but uh, things are looking pretty good in the game. And this little buddy and I, and this little buddy and I need to level up once and I will have a full Isle of Armor decks and this whole quest will be complete. With that lichen rock, this adventure was now finally over. I had obtained my full living Isle of Armor decks, and I had a very fun time in the process. This has been a super fun movie to make, had a great time with this, and I really can't wait until the next DLC drops, The Crown Tundra, and I hope you can look forward to the movie about that too. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.